Every life's a different story of how He led us out of darkness into light, pure light. There's no way to keep it silent. Every breath's another chance to testify. Oh, if I shout, and if I run, no, I'm running. Oh, but there's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. So if I shout, no, I'm shouting. From a heart that's been washed clean. If I run, no, I'm running. And to the world, it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, And for anyone who knows the hope that keeps him moving on through troubled days. And for anyone who knows you've got a future and a hope beyond the grave. Every life's a different story of how he brought us out of darkness into light. Pure light. There's no way to keep us silent. Every breath's another chance. I gotta testify. If I shout, no, I'm shouting. And if I run, no, I'm running. To the world, it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. Oh, so if I shout, no, I'm shouting. If I run, no, I'm running. From the past has been redeemed. To the world, it might look crazy. In that moment, my past erased. My name's been changed. I'll testify. My past erased. My name's been changed, I'll testify. My past erased, my name's been changed, I'll testify. Oh, yes, my past erased, my name's been changed, I'll testify. My past erased. My name's been changed, I'll testify. My past erased, my name's been changed, I'll testify. Oh, so if I shout, no, I'm shouting. From a fountain's been washed clean, if I run. And to the world, it might look crazy. In that moment, oh, if I shout, no, I'm shouting. Yes, if I run, no, I'm running. From the to the world, it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're going to do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold. Oh, see. My past erased, my name. If that's your testimony, raise your hands and sing it with us. My past erased, my name's been changed. I'll testify. My past erased, my name's been changed. I'll testify. Oh, say my past. past So if I shout, and if I run, no, I'm running. From a past has been redeemed. To the world, it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. Oh, if I shout. I'm 
Oh, in that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. Some of us here this evening, if the person sitting next to us knew where we came from, they wouldn't want to be in that seat tonight. But because the blood of Jesus that was shed over our lives, and because of His redemption power, we're in this place. And if you knew where I came from, you'd be shouting the way I am. And, and if you knew the, where I came from, you wouldn't understand why I lift my hands and say, thank you, Jesus. And you'd understand why I do the things I do. Because if I shout, oh, if I shout, no, I'm shouting. If I run, no, I'm running. And to the world it might look crazy. In that moment, sing it again if I shout. And if I run, to the world it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're going to do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. And to the world it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're going to do. In that moment, oh, he gets a hold of you. My past erased, my name's been changed, I'll testify. Oh, thank God my past is erased, and my name, it's been changed. I gotta go testify. Oh, yes, my past erased. My name's been changed, I'll testify. My past here, oh my name, it's been changed. Oh, one more time, my past. My past here, my name's been changed, I'll testify. So if I shout, and if I run, no, I'm running. From a past has been redeemed to the world, it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. To the world, in that moment, gets a hold of you. Oh, would you give God a shout of praise for what He's done for you? Oh, that level of intensity ought to match the level of intensity sin you were in when He brought you out. Oh, you, Ephesians chapter number 4. There is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. First Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles and believed on in the world and received up into glory. Deuteronomy 6 and 4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord. 
Colossians 2 and 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. If you know your God is one, would you clap your hands and give him thanks for the revelation of the oneness of the Godhead. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise. Oh, yes, wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Yes, He's saving me, keeping me. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise. Oh, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood that washes white as snow. Oh, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood that washes white as snow. Well, God is Elohim of all the holy prophets. He's the El Shaddai of all the seers and sages. He's the mighty one of all the sacred pages. He's the great. He's the great I am. Well, he's the great I am. The everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. Great eternal wonder. Holy counselor. Zion's righteous governor. He's the great. He's the great I am. Oh, yes, he's the great I am, the everlasting. He's the prince of peace, great eternal under holy counselor. Zion's righteous governor, he's the great, he's the great I am. Oh, have you been baptized into the body, baptized with the Holy Ghost? There is just one way to enter in it. Just as they did at Pentecost. Well, are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Come and be baptized into the body. And forevermore abide. Well, I've been baptized into the body. Baptized with the Holy Ghost. For there is just one way to enter in it, just as they did at Pentecost. Well, are you in the church triumphant? I'll just come and be, and forever. Oh, there shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory will surely find through the waterway. It is a light today, baptized in Jesus' name. Young and old, repent of all your sins, and the Holy Ghost will enter in. The evening time has come. It is a fact that God and Christ are one. Oh, one, 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 one way to God. Oh, there's only one, 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 one way to God. Baptized. Oh, say it's a one, one, one. Oh, one. Oh, one, one, one. One way to God, baptized in Jesus. Oh, sing it again. Say one, one, one. One way to God, 
One. Aren't you glad you know the way you ought to put your hands together? One, one, one. One way to God. Oh, and the mighty God is Jesus. The Prince of Peace is He. The everlasting Father. The King eternally. The wonderful in wisdom by whom all things are made. The fullness of the Godhead in Jesus is displayed. Well, it's all. The fullness of the Godhead, it's all in Him. Yes, it's all in Him. It's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. Oh, yes, it's all in Him. It's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead. Yes, it's all. Oh, it's all. Yes, it's all. Oh, the mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. Well, He's Emmanuel, God with us. Jehovah, Lord of hosts. The omnipresent Spirit that fills the universe. He's the advocate, the high priest, the lamb for sinners slain. The author of redemption. Oh, glory to His name. Yes, it's all. Oh, the fullness. Yes, it's all. Yes, it's all. Oh, it's all. Oh, the mighty God is Jesus, and it's all. Oh, yes, it's all in Him. It's all. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all. Yes, it's all. Yes, it's all in Him. Oh. Well, He's the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. The living word incarnate, the helpless sinner's friend, our wisdom and perfection, our righteousness and power. Yea, all we need is Jesus. We find this very hour that it's all. Yes, it's all in Him. It's all. Oh, it's all. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all. Oh, our God for whom we waited will be the glad refrain of Israel recreated when Jesus comes again. Lo, He will come and save us, our King and Priest to be. For in Him dwells all fullness, and Lord of all is He. And it's all. It's all. Yes, it's all. It's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus. The mighty God is Jesus. The mighty God. Oh, neither is there salvation in any other. Ah, oh, His name is Jesus. And He's the mighty God I serve. Oh, yes, it's all. Oh, yes, it's all. It's all. It's all in Him. It's all. It's all. Oh, yes, it's all. Yes, it's all. It's a all. It's a all. Well, the mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. Oh, if you're glad you know who Jesus is, you ought to clap your hands and throw your head back and say, Thank you, Jesus. Well, the mighty God is Jesus. 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 Oh, the mighty God. The mighty God is Jesus. Oh, and it's all, it's all, it's all in Him. It's all, it's all. Oh, it's all. Yes, it's all. Well, the mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. Well, if you're glad you know who Jesus is, would you shout amen? Oh, come on, if you're glad you know who Jesus is, would you shout amen? If you're glad you know he brought you out of a pit of miry clay, 
and into this marvelous light, you ought to shout amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see, when I think back on all the things He's done for me, I can't hardly help it. All I can say is He's done so much, I just can't start to tell you what all He's done. If I started, we'd be here all night and we don't have all that time, so you just got to trust me when I say He's done so much for me that I can't tell you all of it. Oh, and you ought to turn to somebody and say, I can't tell you all of it. I just can't start because... When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me. See, my feet start getting light and my hands start to go up and my, and my voice raises when I, when I just think about it. And because He's done so much for me, I know He can do so much for you. Well, I said, I know He can do so much for you. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing too big. There's no, tunnel, there's no mountain that He can't tunnel through or remove out of its place. If you've got Jesus on your side, nothing is impossible. We want to take our needs to the Lord in prayer this evening. Let's remember uh, Michaela. Uh, keep her in our prayers. Uh, I believe several years ago uh, she suffered with Bell's palsy and it um, seems to be taking effect again. So let's remember to keep her in our prayers. Um, any other request, if you make them known by the raising of your hand, God knows the need, is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or even think. And I'm glad I serve a God who is that powerful. Amen? Amen. Any needs uh, in this place, let them be known by the lifting of your hand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, I pray for your Holy Ghost power to fill this place. Lord, I'm thankful for what you've done and for what you will do. God, I pray that you would reach down to where Michaela is right now touch her body even now God we know that you can we know that you will and we're thankful for it Lord oh we know that you are able oh we thank you God and for every need that was represented in this house we know that you can supply that need oh touch the sick touch the lame oh God touch those who need healing in their heart and in their mind touch those who've come with a broken heart touch those that have come oh God that need a touch from you. And we're thankful for what you're going to do. If you know God is going to do something in this service, would you give Him praise for it right now? Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. God bless you, and you can be seated. So good to be in the house of the Lord today. Praise God. What a thrill it is to be able to be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And all of us have that choice and opportunity. Amen. We can be the servant of self or sin or of Jesus Christ. And I want to be a servant of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God is so good to us. And uh, we give Him thanks for His goodness. Thank God for a good spirit of worship here tonight. Amen. God bless all of you. I want to remind you that a little bit.
Let's give the Lord a good hand of praise. Let's lift our voice.
mountains and valleys in our way. But right here in this moment, may our strength be renewed as we recall what God has done. serving the risen Savior. Praise God. Well, I felt the Holy Ghost here this morning. He started talking about His deity, His purpose, His identity. He shows up, doesn't He? Aren't you thankful you know it wasn't just a way in a manger, but He is the way. Praise God. Hopefully you've had time to make up your mind and what you're going to give for missions tonight. Amen. You can stand. Our ushers will come, and we're going to receive our offering. Wait a minute. You can be seated. I do want to mention one more thing um, to our young people. And uh, oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, so lowly, meek and mild, new life, new hope, new joy he brings, won't you listen to the angels sing, they're singing glory, glory, glory to the new born King. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful time. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, so lowly, meek, and mild. New life, new joy he brings. Won't you listen to the angels sing? Glory, glory, glory to the newborn King. Well, he was heralded by the angels, born in a lowly manger. The Virgin Mary was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father. Three wise men came from afar, they were guided by a shining star. 
to see King Jesus where he lay in a manger filled with hay. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. His name is Jesus, oh, Jesus, so lowly, meek and mild, new life, new hope, new joy he brings. Won't you listen? Oh, glory, glory, glory to the newborn King. Well, he was heralded by the angels, and he was born in a lowly manger. The Virgin Mary was his mother, and Joseph was his earthly father. Two wise men came from a star. They were following a shining star Not to see King Jesus Where he lay in a manger Filled with hay His name is Jesus Jesus Oh, what a wonderful time Oh, Jesus Ah, Jesus So lowly, meek and mild New light, new hope the joy he brings. Oh, won't you listen to the angel? Oh, glory, glory, glory to the new born. Oh, sing it, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. His name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus, so lonely, and mild. New life, new hope, new joy he brings. Won't you listen to the angels sing? Glory, glory, glory to the newborn King. Oh, Jesus. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. His name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sing glory, glory, glory. Yes, glory, glory, glory. Yes, glory, glory, glory. To the new. King. Oh, give him some glory in the house. Oh, lift your voice and give God some glory in the house. Yes, his name is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, for child. Oh, yes, he is Jesus. 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 So lonely, meek and mild, new life, new hope, new joy, won't you listen to the angel? They're singing glory, glory, glory to the new morn. Oh, they're singing glory, 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 oh glory, glory. Glory to the newborn King. Let's give praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're my everything, you're my everything. You are my everything, oh precious God. Holy Jesus, praise God. I'm going to four places in the Word of God tonight. In the book of Joel, we will begin. And I have a lot of scriptures, but not a lot of notes. So we'll see how all this works out. But I do feel a word for you today. And I pray that God will speak very clearly to us. And every person here without exception will leave encouraged and uplifted with a uh, uh, total confidence. 
Amen. In Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The book of Joel, chapter 3. I'll also be going to 1 Corinthians. I'll also be going to the book of Matthew. And I'll also be going to the book of Ephesians. So you can go to all four of those with me. Or if you want to just choose one, you can do that as well. And trust me for the other three. Joel chapter 3 and verse number 10. I do want you to hear the word of the Lord. Joel chapter 3 and verse number 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. And let the weak say, I am strong. He didn't say let the strong say it. He said let the weak say, I am strong. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am strong. Amen. Let the weak say, I am strong. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things of which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, things which do not even exist, to bring to nothing things that do exist. God has chosen the things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. In other words, when these things happen, we know it was not us, but it was God. And so therefore, God will get the glory. And we can't say, I'm a tough guy. No, he said, let the weak say, I'm strong. Matthew. Matthew. Oh, he looked up to see if I was talking to him. I'm giving you a scripture reference. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And let's read the next several words to the end of this verse together, aloud and with feeling, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Praise God. One more place. Y'all feeling better? Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 19, Ephesians 5 and 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Let the weak say, I am strong. And God will take the things which are not to destroy those things which are. And if you are facing a mountain and you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could speak. There's a theme here. Say, I'm strong. Speak. To the mountain and then he said speaking amen speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs I want to preach just a little while we sing a song just a little talk with Jesus but I'm going to preach to you tonight about have a little talk with yourself 
have a little talk with yourself. <laughs> Amen. You have ever had anybody say, you say, say something in the other room, you say, what was that? They say, I was talking to myself. Anybody ever done that? You know, sometimes we just need to have a little talk with ourselves. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and ask the Lord to help us tonight. What a mighty God you are. You are so good. You're great and glorious and matchless and powerful. You're great and greatly to be praised. I ask you, Lord, to have your way. Let your work be done. God, I know you've spoken this to my heart. Lord Jesus, beyond the shadow of a doubt, and I pray that you'd help me to be able to deliver what you have spoken to me, to your people today. And we give you praise in Jesus' name and for your glory. And can we clap our hands to the Lord and can we lift up our voices? Lord, mighty God, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God. God bless you. And you can be seated. Amen. One of the greatest struggles that any person will ever have in becoming, amen, is the struggle that they have with themselves. It's not the struggle with other people many times. It's not the struggle even against the, the devil, but it is the struggle uh, with, with ourselves. Amen. Satan is the master of deception. And he is a professional accuser with a long record. And he will work overtime to do his part in his attempt to convince you that you will never amount to anything positive. He would tell us, each of us, that you will always be a hindrance. You will never be an asset or a benefit to anybody or anything. That's his job. That's his profession. He is the accuser of the brethren. It's his duty to try to wear out and wear down the saints of the Most High God. That is what he does. Amen. But I'm here to remind you that Satan is a liar. Not only is he a liar, but he is a professional consummate loser. He's the best loser that's ever been known to man. Amen. In fact, the devil, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, is such a loser that he could not even live for God when there wasn't a devil. There wasn't even a devil, and he couldn't serve God. And he wants you to feel like that you can't serve God either and you can't be effective and you can't develop a sense of faithfulness, amen, and victory. But the devil is a liar and not only is he a liar, he is the greatest loser of all time. He excels in losing. He's the best loser that's ever been known. And I want to remind him of that every day. Amen. Furthermore, he doesn't even have the keys to his own eternal home. Amen. Amen. He excels in losing. And because he's a loser, he wants to convince you that you are a loser also. The will of God, however, is for you to succeed. The will of God is for you to do exploits. The will of God is for you to be fruitful, to be effective, and to live an overcoming and victorious life. And the will of God and God in His work, everything that God is doing, He is doing to lift you up. Amen. To put that inspiration of His Spirit, amen, the wind beneath your wings, so to speak. You are not meant to crawl on your belly. You are meant to fly. You are meant to run. You are meant to fight. You are meant to be victorious. You are meant to be an overcomer. The devil's a loser, but you're a child of God. And so in our humanity, or we are in our humanity, we are caught between the struggle of two worlds and two desires.
the desire of Satan to destroy and the desire of God that we have abundant life. The thief comes but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Abundant life. Abundant life. Abounding life. Overflowing life. I'm not talking about um, it, man. Uh, monetary riches. Oh, you can be uh, you can be as poor as Job's turkey, and be the happiest person in town because you've got abundant life in Jesus Christ, abounding, overflowing love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, gentleness. Against such there is no law. It's the will of God for you to have the joy of the Lord in your heart, the peace of God in your soul, the riches of His glory in your life, abundant life. So we're caught between two desires. We're caught between the struggle of two worlds, the desire of the devil to destroy you, the desire of God that you have abundant life. And you will hear voices both from Satan and from the Almighty God. Both will talk to you. The devil will do his best to convince you that you are no good. A man to cause you to live in condemnation. To cause you to believe that you will never overcome. But on the other hand, the voice of God whispers in your ear that you are my child. You are my beloved. You are the apple of my eye. You're the one that I came for. You're the reason I shed my blood. Hallelujah. But only you can determine the end result. On the one hand, you've got the world and the devil and the flesh pulling in one direction and trying to convince you that there's no point in even attempting to try this. On the other hand, you've got God and all the angels of heaven that are encouraging you. Amen. And also that great cloud of witnesses that has gone before us. They're saying, come on, come on. Come on, don't give up. Keep pressing on. But the end result will be determined by me and by you. Which voice will I listen to? Whose report am I going to believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. <laughs> and so we sing the song, as I've already mentioned, just a little talk with Jesus. And that is essential. A daily prayer life is essential. Consistent relationship and communication with Jesus Christ is essential. But sometimes we've got to grab ourselves by the nap of the neck. And we got to have a good talk with the man that we look at or the woman that you look at in the mirror. Sometimes we just need to have a little talk with ourselves. Somebody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. In Joel's book, the people of God have been in captivity. But God was about to do a work. And God has a message in this third chapter of the book of Joel for all the heathen. And he says, because of what you have done to my people and because of the treasures of my house that you have defiled, I am about to devastate your land. And destroy your children. Amen. Your children are going to become slaves. Amen. Your descendants are about to live in bondage. He's got that message for the heathen, for the enemies of God and the people of God. But then to the children of Judah and to the children of Jerusalem, God says, It's time for you to take your plowshares. And beat your plowshares into swords. And your pruning hooks into spears. He says you who have been working in the vineyards of your enemy. For the prosperity of your enemy. You who have been in captivity. It's time for you to turn in the farm tools. And quit assisting your enemy in his productiveness. And make ready for the battle. 
And then Almighty God says to His people these words. He said, let the weak say. Amen. Let, let the impoverished say. Let the weary say. Let the one that doesn't have any strength say. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Don't wait until you're strong to say it. But while you're yet weak, say I'm strong. While you're yet weary, say I am strong. While you still feel discouraged, take yourself, amen, by the hand and look at yourself in the mirror and say, listen here, buddy boy, it's time you understand you may feel weak, you may feel weary, you may feel discouraged, but it's time to have a talk with yourself. Let the weak say, I am strong. You see, at this point in the third chapter of the book of Joel, nothing had really changed. We're only seeing and reading the promises of God and what God said He's going to do to the heathen. Amen. And the restoration that He's going to bring about His people but they have not yet experienced it. Amen. It was still in their future. But yet he said, don't wait until it happens. Don't wait until you have your strength back. Don't wait until you can run the race. Amen. Don't wait until, you, we're, we're, until you're built back up and restored to your homeland. But right now, in your time of des devastation, in the place of discouragement, when you feel so weak that you can't hardly get one foot in front of the other, God said, you need to make a proclamation. You need to make a declaration. Let the weak say, I am strong. Somebody shout it to me today. I am strong. Come on, say it again. I am strong. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Nothing at that point had changed. They were still in captivity. Yet God said, say it. They didn't feel strong, but God's command was, say it. They were still in the vineyards of their enemy, but God said, say it. They were still tilling the ground, amen, in the garden pots of the heathens, but God said, say it. Come on, brother, whatever you're facing, amen, come on, sister, whatever you're dealing with, don't say I'm weak, don't say I'm weary, don't say I'm discouraged, don't say I'm devastated. You go ahead and look the devil in the face and say, listen here, buddy, I'm strong. I am strong. Many times, many times we have to say it before it occurs. We've got to say it before it exists. I am told, amen, and I'm sure you've read it as well, that many times the biggest part of a person's recovery, amen, is their own will. Amen, I'm thinking it was, um, I, 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 maybe I shouldn't say the name, but I'm thinking it was, Brother Scott Wilson, when he was in such a critical, devastated condition in dealing with um, COVID-19, and he was on the ventilator, and about three different times it appeared that he would leave this world. Amen, I'm believing it, I'm thinking it was him that said he heard somebody say in the midst of all of that, that his survival at this point is totally up to him. He heard that somehow through all of that fog of semi-consciousness and unconsciousness. And he said there was something that got in him that said, I'm going to live. I'm telling you, there's something about a will. There's something about a determination. There is something about when you feel devastated and down and discouraged. And the devil's beating you up and blacking your eyes. You just go ahead and roll over. And you might not can get on your feet, but you look at your enemy. And you say, I have you to know, I'm strong. And I will not be defeated. I will be up again. Come on, cry it out with me. Let the weak say. 
Come on, let the weak say, I am strong. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. You may be seated. Many times you have to say it before it exists. We have to declare it before it happens. Amen. Because faith is exactly that. Faith is the evidence of what you don't have. Amen. It's the evidence of what you cannot see. You say, I'm strong, but you're hobbling. Amen. What are you doing? You're exercising your faith. Faith is the evidence uh, that you possess when th that you hold on to until the evidence gets there. Amen. And faith is a substance that you hold in your hand when there's not any substance to hold to. I'm barely shuffling. I'm using a cane. I can hardly put one foot in front of the other. But devil, you ser be served notice today. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'll keep marching. Sometimes we need to just have a little talk with ourselves. Let the weak say, I'm strong. This has always been God's principle. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, as we've read in verse 22, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and this is mind-boggling, and the things which are not. Now, a thing that is not means it does not exist. The things that do not exist. God hath chosen things that do not exist to bring to nothing things that are. You figure that one out. I'll tell you how to figure it out. It's the application and the operation of faith. It's the evidence and the substance. The evidence and the substance. Yeah, you say, well, I'm still sick, but I've got evidence because I've got faith. I still don't feel too good. Amen. But there is a substance that I possess in spite of what the evidence may prove or show otherwise. I've got a higher evidence, and that's the evidence that's called faith. I just remembered something. I hadn't used these in a while. Hold that, Brother Dylan. Amen. Hold that, Brother Trent. Amen. Hold that, Brother Dale. Praise God. Amen. you got to get something in your hand. When you do not possess the reality of your miracle, if you can hold on to faith, you've got evidence and you've got substance as long as you've got faith. And He'll take that nothing. He'll take what does not exist and destroy what does exist. Come on, let in your weakness you just go ahead and declare, I am strong. In your defeat, go ahead and declare, I am victorious. In your sickness, go ahead and declare, I am healed. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Praise God, help me. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise the Lord with all of our hearts. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can be seated. Amen. God said, say, I am strong. Amen. How many want to be obedient to God? God will bring to nothing strong enemies who really exist by weak by the weak saint who determines to be strong. Boy, I stumbled that one up. Let me say it again. God will bring to naught strong enemies who really do exist by the weak saint who determines to be strong. 
You may not be strong right now, but say it anyway. Declare it anyway. God will use what is not to destroy what is. That's what the Bible says. He will use what does not exist to, to destroy enemies that do exist. You just hold on to your faith. See, Jacob was a supplanter and a deceiver, but God said, you're a prince. Moses was afflicted by poor speech, but God said, you're my spokesman. Gideon was terrified, but God said, you're a mighty man of valor. David was despised, but God said, you're a man after my own heart. Paul was a murderer, but God made him a preacher. Whatever you're in and whatever you're facing and whatever you're dealing with today, amen, recognize that in spite of your dilemma, in spite of your circumstance, you can speak that word of faith and say, I am strong. Hallelujah. I am strong. Oh, my friend, the enemy, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. The book of Matthew, we read, the disciples were unable to cast out a devil. And they posed the question to Jesus Christ. Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus responded, now hear this. Because of your unbelief. It was not because the power was not available to them. But it's because when they were weak. They said, we're weak. We can't do this. You see, people who do things that are impossible are ones that live by this mindset. Somebody says, you can't do it. It cannot be done. To somebody that lives and has this revelation. That's just like sick them to a dog. Can't be done? Watch this. Don't, don't, don't say that God doesn't heal. Watch him heal. Don't say revivals don't happen. Watch it happen. Don't say, I can't overcome cigarettes or alcohol or pornography or drug addiction or, or, or mental issues. Don't, don't say it cannot happen. Say, I know my God can. Now, now, now let me just let me just get get right here just a little bit and 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 you see the problem is we we, we bow at the wrong altar we glorify our problems well 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 help us Jesus amen some some folks and I don't want to get sidetracked I want to stay on my notes because I don't want to mess up a good message amen but but some folks it seems like I'm not talking about you I'm talking about some folks. Some folks seems like they glory if they got problems. And I've met some folks that they ain't happy unless they're sad. <laughs> it's something about that. Give me a little attention. And 
and, and, and let me wallow in my grief. Amen. So everybody can, can pet me and pat me and feel sorry. Come on, it's time for us to not wallow in our weakness, but to declare in the face of adversity, I'm stronger than this problem. I'm stronger than this trial. I'm stronger than this sickness. <laughs> Let the weak say, I'm not going to give glory to my problem. I'm not going to give place to the devil. I'm going to lift up the name of the power of the name of Jesus Christ and the power of His blood, His spirit, and His word. I'll say I'm strong. I'll worship. I'll magnify the name of the Lord. I'm going to dance on the grave of my enemies. Let the weak say, I am strong. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. In one of Andy Andrews' books I read a number of years ago about a man, a skirmish, a battle there at one of the largest, I think it was Gettysburg, you can be seated at uh, uh, one of the largest battles of the Civil War, and there was a, a greatly outmanned, outgunned, overpowered uh, corporal or captain or whatever his uh, position was, and, and, and it seemed like that there was no, uh, uh, no answers, his backup was uh, shot to rags, and there was no reinforcements that were coming, and there was a mass uh, armies against them amen and then they were out of ammunition that's a pretty bad place to be in amen but in the midst of all of that that young former school teacher by the name of Joshua Chamberlain he leapt to the wall that had been erected there and cried to his men fix bayonets and charge and some 40 I think it was 40 something amen soldiers against several hundred amen they charged toward their enemy and, and Joshua Chamberlain made the statement he said, I knew I may die today, but I refuse to die with a bullet in my back. Come on, stand up to the enemy. Stand up to the devil. Stand up to your problem. Stand up to your disease. Stand up to your adversity. And say, I am strong. Now I'm going to tell you just a handful of a handful, I believe it was of Union soldiers, took captive a handful of unarmed Union soldiers, took captive several hundred Confederate soldiers who were heavily armed, had weapons and ammunition, and, and unarmed them that day. They won the battle, and it was all out of a determination that I will not be defeated, I will not fall down and die, I will Will not come on somebody. Hey man, say it. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Hallelujah. Hey man, hey man. Jesus responded, You couldn't do this because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. He said, You got to get rid of that faithless thinking and faithless speaking. I hope you're hearing the Word of God tonight. Get faithless speaking out of your vocabulary. I said get faithless speaking out of your vocabulary. When we speak of defeat, when we speak a man of of, of, of discouragement and yeah we all have it amen and sometimes every one of us your pastor included feels weak and feels discouraged and gets weary from the struggle but there's one thing that we've got to determine in our hearts we're not living and fighting amen and doing this thing by our feelings but by our knowledge of the word of God Get faithless speaking out of your vocabulary. Don't give place to the devil. Don't give glory to the devil. Oh, he may knock me down, but I'm not going to talk about it. I may play face plant in the dirt, 
But I'm not going to testify about it. I'm going to get up on my feet dirty and bloody and bruised and say I am strong and I will win. I will win. Oh, come on, let's clap our hands and give the Lord praise. Jesus said to his disciples, you must get rid of that faithless thinking and speaking. The reason you could not see this happen is because of your unbelief. Amen, amen. Don't give doubt. Don't feed it. Starve it. Starve your doubt and feed your faith. And don't nurse grudges. Praise God. Well, that's a different subject for a different time, but it fits right now. What is a nurse supposed to do? Bring something back to health. You keep nursing grudges. They're going to keep on living. Let your grudges starve to death. And have a funeral for them and take them out to the cemetery and bury them six foot under and pour concrete and seal the grave where they can never come out again. Come on, it's our choice. The, de- the devil's speaking on one side and the Lord is speaking on the other. But it's up to you. Have a talk with yourself. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Jesus continued. He said, it's because of your unbelief. God, sometimes I find myself as the man that brought his afflicted um, uh, son, was it, uh, to the Lord. And, 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 and he said, to him, uh, if you can do anything. <laughs> I mean, he's speaking to the one that created all things. And he says, Lord, if you can do anything. And sometimes that's the way we present our problems to Jesus. We may not say it exactly like that. Amen. But that's the attitude sometimes in which we present it to the Lord. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I want us to do it with faith and not doubt. With belief and not unbelief. Get quit out of your vocabulary. Tear the reverse out of your transmission. Amen. Break the rear view mirror off of your automobile. It's forward march. We're strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Jesus said it's because you could not believe that this thing could not happen. He said if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Amen. Unto this mountain. What is the mountain that he's talking about? That little person. Amen. That or that individual who could not be. They could not de- deliver. Whatever your mountain is. Amen. He said if you had faith. As of a grain of mustard seed. You shall say. Come on. Talk to yourself. And talk to your problem. Be thou removed. Ah, it's coming back to my mind right now. That wonderful service that we had in this place a few months ago when we preached about the prophetic word and the preacher preaching in the valley of dry bones. What was going on? There was some power that was unleashed when the preacher began to preach. He preached and the and the bones came together and he preached and the sinews and the flesh came upon the bones, but they were still corpses, lying, splayed in whatever direction they fell when they were destroyed that day but the preacher didn't quit preaching the Bible said he prophesied to the winds he spoke to the spirit and said oh wind blow upon them hey man these slain and life came I'm telling you not only is there power in the preached word of the preacher but there's some power that's unleashed in your mouth these signs shall follow them that believe that's not just the preacher but them that believe say to this mountain speak the word I am strong I am clap your hands and give the Lord it matters what you say it matters what you talk about. Amen. You can be seated. 
I could elaborate on that, but you could probably read between the lines. We have a choice every day that we wake up. I had a person that was, I've told you this before, but a person that was very dear to me in my life when I was a younger person. And that individual, amen, they told us one time, they said, I just, some days I decide I'm going to be in a mood. Well, what kind of stupidity is that? I'm just going to be in a bad mood today. Well, stick to yourself. Don't mess somebody else's day up. If you want to have a bad mood and you want to live like that, then just find yourself a hole and go ahead and have yourself a pity party. But don't invite me to come because I ain't coming. No, don't waste a day. Don't waste an hour. Don't waste a moment that God has given to you. Determine when you roll out of bed and your feet hit the floor. This is the day the Lord has made. I don't know what I'm going to face, but I know when it's all said and done, I'm still going to be in the palm of the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm still going to be His child. He's still going to be my Father. I am strong. It matters what you say. It matters what you say. So have a conversation with yourself. Ephesians 5 and 19 said, Speaking to yourself. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns. Devil comes and whack. Ah. There it is. He got the first punch in. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and have a conversation with myself. And I'm going to say, The Lord is my shepherd. I'm going to speak to myself in Psalms. I'm going to say, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my strength. He is my God. <laughs> oh, I'm going to speak to myself in psalms and, and then I'm going to speak to myself in, in hymns. The love of Jesus to me is greater than anything else I've ever known. It reaches deeper than any sin stain. And it reaches higher than heaven's throne. Uh, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. I'm on the stairway to heaven tonight. Praise God. Songs and hymns. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Let the hallelujahs roll. You see, we could talk about that. We could speak to ourselves about that or or we could consume all of our time with worthless conversations about the president. Or the issues of our day or who we're going to be bombed by. Amen. And the condition of the stock market, or the pr- price of gasoline. All these things do affect our lives, but they don't affect our eternity. And I'm going to focus on the eternal things of God. I am strong. Come on, just have a little talk with yourself. Have a little talk with yourself. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to be discouraged. In my weakness, I'm yet strong. Oh, hallelujah. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. I've visited people before you can be seated and they're depressed. 
And I go in their houses and they got all their blinds drawn and the lights turned down very dim. I said, my Lord in heaven, open the shades. Turn the lights on. Turn on some good gospel music. No wonder you're discouraged. You're living in a tomb. Come on, you can choose to live on the dark side of the street or walk in the sunshine. You say it's a cloudy day. Walk in the sunshine anyway of the light of God's love. I am strong. Praise God. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. Joel, God through Joel said, let the weak say, I am strong. He didn't say, say I'm weak. That may be the reality, but don't admit it. Well, am I still in the book? He didn't say, say I'm hopeless. Don't say I'm no good to anybody. Don't say I'll never amount to anything. When you find yourself in captivity, Working in the garden of your enemy. Amen. Beat your pruning hooks and plowshares into weapons of warfare. And make a bold declaration out in the middle of the enemy's territory. I am strong. I will not be defeated. Get rid of the tools. Which keep you working in the harvest field of your enemy. <laughs> and one of them is right here inside of your mouth. And I don't, I don't, I'm not telling you cut it off. <laughs> Amen. Just get it under control. Somebody say, watch what you say. It's hard to see it. But. Think about it before it comes out. And whatsoever things are good. Don't just think about them, but say them. You know, I could, I could just park here for a while. Amen. Amen. It matters. It matters. It affects you. It affects your family. It affects your outlook on life. It affects your level of victory. It affects whether you're going to be part of revival or not. And in the end, it's going to affect your eternal salvation. Because if we continually dwell upon the negative, amen, and the enemy, oh no, and our weakness and our insecurities and our inabilities, hey, we're going to trust in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the weak say, let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. Jesus said very clearly, without me, you can do nothing. So when we make the proclamation, I am strong, we're not talking about that strength that we pull from our own reserves. Although, our will must be connected with God's power. Come here, Dustin. God. Go sit down. God is not going to do this. He's not going to do this all the way to glory. And there's going to be times he's going to tell you, see why I didn't take this. He's, he's not going to, he's going to do it from time to time when we cannot walk by ourselves. But there's got to be a point in our lives where we say, you know what, sweet you, buddy, boy, you're a good preacher. Amen, don't leave me yet. Amen, there's got to come a time in our lives where we say, I'm going to walk. I'm going to keep my hands in the hand of Jesus Christ. But I can walk. I don't have to be carried in the steps of the church. You see it? And it's our will connected with God's power. Everything in the kingdom of God works by what you're holding in your hand right there, faith. 
our will, God's power. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But the Apostle Paul had an understanding. He said, but I can do all things. How many things? All things. I can do. All, say it again. All things. Amen. That don't mean just some things, but what? All things. Come on. All things. All things. Let's say it together. I can do all things through Christ. Why? Brother Trent, when I'm in it, and I'm discouraged, and I don't have enough strength, and I, Monday morning I don't even want to roll out of bed. I want to just, it's like the, like the mother went into the room where her son was sleeping and she said, you got to get up. It's time to go to church. I don't want to go to church today. Well, she said, you got to. You're the pastor. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, do we, what do we do when we find ourselves in those situations? We don't have any, seem like any reserves of strength remaining. We're going to tag in to where the source of strength and power is and understand that I can do all things through the strength that comes from my connection with Jesus Christ. Let's stand to our feet. Turn to your neighbor and give him a good firm handshake and say, I am strong. I may appear weak. I may feel weak. I may really be weak. But I refuse to be defeated. And I will declare through the power of Jesus Christ that even in my weakness, His strength is made perfect. I am strong because of Him residing within me. Let's sing. Let's worship the Lord. Let's give well, Him praise. Right well, now. I can make it. My faith can take it. Oh, cause I've got heaven on my mind. He'll take me through it. Yes, I can do it. Oh, keep the faith until I cross the finish line. Oh, yes, I can make it. My faith can take it. Oh, cause I've got a heaven on my mind. He'll take me through it. Yes, I can do it. Keep the faith until I cross the finish line. Oh, I can make it. My faith can take it. Oh, cause I've got heaven on my mind To take me through it Yes, I can do it Just keep the faith until I cross the finish line Oh, I can make it My faith can take it Oh, cause I've got heaven on my mind To take me through it Yes, I can do it Keep the faith until I cross the finish line. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes I go and the, the master bath of our home and I go to my vanity and look at myself in the mirror and say, you listen here, Harlan Morgan. You're getting fat. <laughs> you be quiet. <laughs> but it's not just those times. But there are times when just like you feel I have to look at myself and have a conversation with myself and say, regardless of the circumstances, we're going to get through this. We're going to make it to the other side. And in our weakness, the strength of God is made strong. Let, the, I hope you don't ever forget this. Let the weak say, hey, when you're, when you're weak, say, I am strong. Praise God. Our dependence is on the Lord and His reserves of strength never run out. we got to be close to Him.
Lord Jesus, I love you with all of my heart. And I thank you for this wonderful congregation. And I thank you for your great, great word. And I thank you for your spirit that's met with us in a great way today. I thank you for the encouragement and inspiration that we have felt in this service. I pray for every child of God that's here. Help us, Lord, to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. We believe you and praise you for all of your wonderful kindness and goodness to us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to always be strong in the Lord and the power of your might. We'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. There will be no event here tomorrow evening. Make sure you're keeping up your life of prayer throughout the month of December. Amen. We will resume family prayer meetings and and uh, other things on in the month of January. But for now, amen, our focus is completing the building. And uh, so remember that. Pray for one another. Keep your life of prayer up. And we'll see you back here Wednesday evening. Those that are traveling, I know we've got some that are out, others that will be leaving. Be safe. Have a wonderful time in your time of celebration and travel. Those of you that are in town, I'll see you on Wednesday night. I'm looking forward to getting back into the Word of God on Wednesday evening. When you roll out of bed in the morning, what you going to say? Do it in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.